Junk Dump here, and we're back with the 1970 Oldsmobile 455. Now that there are some miles on the engine and it's broken in, we're going to do a compression test to check it out. Now remember, it's not the numbers that we're so concerned about, but more the deviation. So a 10% deviation typically indicates that there's a problem with the engine. And with engines that I build, I like to see after the break-in period less than 1% deviation. So we'll start by removing the spark plugs and wires. I performed this compression check after the break-in period so that I can check on and see if I installed those rings properly, if they were seated well to the cylinder walls, and also you're going to want to look to see if your cylinder head valves and seats are sealing properly. If any of those things are off or less than perfect between each cylinder, then you're going to see a major deviation in the compression. Before you start, it's a good idea to disable the ignition and the fuel system. And now it's time to install the compression tester. You install that right into one of the spark plug holes and be sure you don't over tighten it. It's just an O-ring seal, so all it needs to be is hand tight. I like to take a look at the first stroke first and see what kind of pressure it builds initially. You want that number to be at least 50% of the full pressure that it builds. Um, but when you're using uh, gapless rings, sometimes you'll notice that's a bit higher. And for cylinder one, the first stroke pressure is up to 155 PSI. And for cylinder one, the total compression came up to 188 PSI. That leaves us with a mean of 188 with no deviation, of course, because we only have one data point. Oh, and you can tell as it instantly started to climb and only went a little way that that was on its compression stroke when it started, so that first stroke isn't going to be accurate for this one. So that's going to be 187 PSI, the deviation is going to be half a PSI, and the deviation percentage is only going to be 0.3, and since we only have two points, they're going to be obviously the same, so that's where we're at so far. And cylinder 5, first stroke is up to 140 PSI, again looking good. And for cylinder 5, the compression is up to 185 PSI. That brings our mean up to 186.7 PSI and our mean deviation to 1.1 PSI and 0.6% deviation. Last on this side is cylinder 7. Uh, first stroke was off camera and I didn't happen to see it when I was actually performing it, so no data there. But it looks like our final for cylinder 7 is 187 PSI. And that brings our mean to 186.8 PSI with a deviation of 0.9 PSI and 0.5%, which again is still looking very good. Now for the other bank, we're going to start on cylinder 2, and that first stroke was up to 150 PSI. 
and cylinder two gets a compression of 190 PSI. That's going to bring our mean to 186.4 PSI. And that means our deviation is 1.1 PSI and 0.6%. Now cylinder four, the first stroke is up to 140 PSI. And cylinder four, final compression is 190 PSI. And that's gonna bring our mean up to 187 PSI. And our deviation is only 1.3 PSI and 0.7%. So again, we're still looking good. Next up is cylinder 6, and the first stroke was up to 140 PSI, which is good. And cylinder 6 final compression is 187 PSI. That's going to bring our mean up to 187 PSI, and our deviation is only 1.1 PSI, and our deviation percentage is 0.6%. Now for last, we're going to look at cylinder 8, the first stroke is 140, and cylinder 8 final compression is 188 PSI, and that's going to bring our mean to 187.1 PSI, with a deviation of 1.2 PSI, and a deviation of 0.6%, which is excellent, I'm very happy with that. So next it's time to button up. So we need to install the spark plugs, install the wires, and don't forget to enable that fuel and ignition system. And that concludes the compression test on our 1970 Oldsmobile 455 with a mean deviation of 1.2 PSI and only being 0.6% off. That is a fantastic number and I am very happy with that. Basically that means this is a nice healthy Oldsmobile 455. Thanks for watching.